People always say, go out there and make your mistakes, but just don't make it twice. One word I would use to describe a histonian is resilient. We've been through all kinds of stuff and we always bounce back. I think it applies to us too. With hard work and maybe God's blessing, we are still not just surviving, but we're, I think it's thriving. I'm Teresa Pham. And I'm Shaw Wynn. We're farmers and owners at Life and Rose Farm here in Magnolia, Texas. I was born and raised in Vietnam, and we emigrated here when I was eight. I grew up in Dallas. We both come from a pretty sporty background, and we love uh, to play volleyball and other sports too. We both were in a tournament in Oklahoma, and that's how we met. We both had successful careers in corporate America with me in finance and Shaw in technology. At the end of the day, we're both dreamers, and we want to shake and move and make a difference in the community, but we knew that we couldn't do that with just one job. You had to reach for the sky. During that time, while we were working our corporate careers, we were also yep. serial flippers. The struggle with infertility really pushed us to live life to the fullest. We were in Houston for a long time. I knew that she loved roses. I knew that she wanted to grow them. But during COVID, we made a decision to move out of the city. He basically just said, you can grow roses out here. And that was all it took. Life in Rose Farm started approximately three, three and a half years ago. We've got 27 acres total. We have 6,000 plus roses planted in the ground. Nice fragrance. We had 3,700 potted roses. They grow better inside this enclosed environment, so it's protected. This environment and the climate is not conducive. First, for rose growing. It's certainly not for the types of roses that we like to grow, which are European bread. This is a Bolero rose that smell real strong. We faced the winter freeze the first year, a drought that following summer, mm -hmm. and then the following year was another freeze in addition to shortage of crops. So we were like, I'm guessing we're not gonna get any roses and I don't know if we can call ourselves a rose farm. So this is the broken pipe. That's another thing that we had to deal with right in the beginning as we were starting out the farm. But I think it's great because it got us a little taste of what farm life was like right off the bat. And we thought if we were going to do something like this in the unlikeliest of places, why not make it available to the public on different occasions? We do offer events like Cut Your Own Rose Therapy Experience or Afternoon Tea. We want to create an aesthetically beautiful place of gathering so that people can come and enjoy the roses, but they can also really take in the beauty and the joy that it brings. What sets us apart from all the other Cut Rose Farm is that we are the only ones down here in the South. The general community in Magnolia has welcomed us with open arms. Travel is where we get our inspiration. Our favorite place to travel is Italy. Traveling gives us the insight and the different unique aspect to making it very authentic. You cut them off and you harvest the seeds from here. This is what you use to plant the actual new baby plant. Most days are not typical. It's every, every day. Every day, all day. If you're not doing anything, you're not doing something right. Right. There's a lot of DIYs that happen here on our farm and we don't have employees. Having flipped homes in our past has hugely benefited in what we do here. I didn't have any experience or formal training. It was just a desire that I wanted to fulfill and I felt like it was an urge that just needed to come out. Taking no wasn't an answer and being dreamers that we are, we're gonna keep pushing ourselves. We dare to dream greatly and leave a big imprint on this world. We're all in. We're all in.